What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we're doing the second part of Warzone. Um, in the previous part, the first part was intrusion analysis and we did the intrusion analysis with Brim. So in the second part, we're going also to use Brim with Wireshark and Network Miner to analyze an incident. So the incident has been caught and triggered by an IDS alert. We're going to investigate and find out what happened. Okay, so we deploy the machine and let's go for the description. So you work as a tier one security analyst, level one for a managed security service provider. Again, you're tasked with monitoring network alerts. An alert triggered miscellaneous activity and network torsion was detected and potential corporate privacy violation. So we have these alerts triggered by the IDS alert. The IDS, we don't have an idea of what this is exactly the IDS configured in the network. It could be Snort, it could be another IDS. So that's not important for us in this scenario. What matters is that we got the PCAP, uh, the PCAP from the team. And as a security analyst, we require to, uh, you're required to analyze the PCAP using the network analysis tools to be able to extract artifacts and inform your team what happened and what was the uh, uh, reason, the impact, and the lessons learned from this incident. So the first thing we're going to open Brim here and going to file, new window, oops, no, not new window. Let's close that, choose files. And from here, desktop, zoom bcap, Okay, now the file is being loaded. So along Brim, we have the luxury to use also Network Miner. All of these tools are network analysis tools to which you can load backup files in order to extract network artifacts. So we click to we click open and we go to desktop zone bcap. Okay. So, and also we can open Wireshark. File, open. Ubuntu desktop, choosing the file. Okay, so we have the file open in all the three tools. Let's go first to Brim. So we have the analysis is finished. As you can see in Brim, we have the queries on the left, which I explained previously how to work with these queries and these fields. So basically they change according to the pickup file you upload. They are not fixed, they are not constant. Uh, they change according to the file we upload and the structure of it. Okay, so what to do now? Well, in this scenario, we're going to, and, and uh, <laughs> oh my God, we're going to answer the questions. So what was the alert signature for a network Trojan that was detected? So let's go find out the signature for this alert. So as you can see on the left, we have, as you can see, these fields. Suricat so alerts by category, Suricat so alerts by source and destination, Suricat so alerts by subnet. So we conclude that the IDS that is deployed on the network is Suricata. So to find out more details about every category trigger, we can go to Suricat so alerts by category. And as you can see, the command is popped here automatically executed and we can click on network torsion while detected right click on that and open details in the details pane we get more information about this as you can see the category the severity and count but yet we cannot see the signature so we click on pivot to logs pivoting to logs opens exactly the log entry or the event uh, here so as you can see, we have information about the source IP, port, destination, destination port. As you can see, it happens over port 80. Uh, it means that the network torsion was downloaded over the uh, browser. And this is a signature. Right click and copy that. You get the answer. So ET malware likely evil EXE download from blah, 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 non-executable non extension M2. The Another alert. What was the alert signature for potential corporate privacy violation? Okay, we go back to category and we highlight the potential corporate privacy violation, right click, pivot to logs. And from here we are able to extract the alert signature. So ET policy, portable executable or the other Windows file download over HTTP protocol. What was the IP to trigger either alert? As you can see, 
it's telling you that the, the IP that triggered both alert is the same IP for two for the two events. As you can see, it's this IP address 185, 18, 164, 8. So to defang the IP, we can go to Cyber Chef. So in Cyber Chef here, we can copy the IP address. Def where is the IP? So here, and this is your answer. Provide the full URL for the malicious downloaded file in your answer, defang the URL. So and here we got to find the URL. So basically what happens here, guys, the malicious file has been downloaded over the internet, specifically over the browser port 80. We have to find out, so must, there must be a URL, right, over which the file was, been, was, was downloaded. So we have to find out what was the URL. So to find this, we have to go to examine the HTTP requests. So we click on HTTP requests, and we see a long list of URLs. So which one is the correct one? So basically, since a file was downloaded, we're looking for a pattern in the URL that indicates a file with an extension. So if you scroll, as you can see, these URLs don't indicate that there is a file being downloaded. If you scroll all the way down, 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 down. You see this one? This is the domain, and this is the URL. And as you can see, this is the file that has been downloaded, gap1.cab. So you copy the domain, put in the formula for defining the URL, and copy the URL and this is the full URL guys here what's the name of the payload within the cap file what's the name of the payload within the cap file so inside this file we got a payload how to find this payload if you go to file activity in here as you can see, we got we see the file name that has been downloaded and probably got executed in the host. And we're given the MD5 hash of the file. So if we copy that and we do some uh, intellig threat intelligence on this file, so virus total put in the, ha the hash, go to details, and here we see the underlying payloads that were witnessed in the wild for this malware we can see a dll so in our scenario dll is the answer or this is the payload carried through this file what was the user agent associated with the nest with this network traffic to find the answer for this one guys we cannot find it here since user agent is not shown in the logs here so we have now to pivot to tell me what wireshark but to make this easy we have to create some filters so the source IP is this let's copy that IP address and go to Wireshark so in here we type IP dot address equal and we search it will show all of the packets that involve this IP address the first one let's see here so we're looking for a HTTP packet here. So we have this one, HTTP packet, protocol HTTP. And in here we can extract the user agent. So this, as you can see, guys, this is the user, user agent. And this is your answer. What other domains do you see in the network traffic that are labeled as malicious by virus total? Enter the domains defined in alphabetical order. So, there are domain names associated with what? Tell me what? With the file. If you go to virus total and we highlight or we scroll down to the domain section, going to relations, yes. As you can see, these are the domains to which the um, malware contact, contact, admit contact. So, basic as you can see, we got these. But we have to correlate the results from this analysis with our analysis. So if you go back to Brim, and if you go to again back to HTTP requests, we see a couple domains here. These domains have been contacted by the tell me what by the malware. So we have to correlate the list from here with the list here. So we have knockout lights, and we have AZ corner. Both domains are mentioned here. Or listed here 
Now, what about the other domains? These domains are not malicious domains since they are not correlated to the list here. So this is the exact list of the malicious domains connected to the domain, uh, to the malware. Any other domain that is not in this list here is not considered as malicious. Hence, ec.atmdt is not malicious. This is not malicious. Let me see. Yeah. So we have got one and two probably, yes? How many? So two domains that are malicious. Now, there are IP addresses flagged as not suspicious traffic. What are the IP addresses? So if we go to alerts and we highlight not suspicious traffic, we open the log detail, or let's pivot to logs. As you can see, we see couple we see only one. How many? One, two IP addresses. These two IP addresses are highlighted by the IDS as not malicious. So we take them, defang them, and we put the answer. For the first IP address, this one, flagged as not suspicious traffic. According to VirusTotal, there are several domains associated with this one IP address. And the domains happen to be flagged as malicious. How come? So if we take the IP address here, let's copy it. And we do some intelligence on this IP. So enter. We go to details, relations. Indeed, we have got a couple domain names associated with that IP address, among which we have four malicious ones. They have, as you can see, uh, some antiviruses flag them as malicious. So what's going on here? What were the domains you spotted in the network traffic associated with this IP address? Again, we have to do correlation between the list here and our list. The list here and the list from the analysis. So if you open the network miner here, we open network miner to see all the associations between this IP address and the domain names. As you can see, the IP address is this. 64, 225, 65, 166 associated with the three domain names. Safe bank test. Um, don't know what's that. And UL certification XYZ. So these three domains happen to be in the list of malicious domains here. So indeed, this is the list of suspe suspicious domains uh, that. Uh, connect somehow to the IP address. You define them and you answer the question. The last question is now for the second IP, this one. Also again marked as not suspicious traffic. What was the domain you spotted in the network traffic associated with this IP address? So it's asking what's the domain you spotted in the network traffic. So we go to again network miner and the hype IP ends with 176 so let's see which IP ends with 176 this one and the domain associated with that IP is this two parts cow the top and this is the answer now if you want to find out if this really a malicious domain we can copy the IP address from here and see what virus total has to say about this IP address go to relations and as you can see here, domain name here, two parts cow the top, is not on this list. Let me see. Do we have? No, it's not on this list. But it's witnessed here. So again, it is associated with that IP address, but it is not malicious, by the way. So guys, that was today's video. I hope you like that and I will see you in the next video.